guys, what's up? Sherry here from No Fucks Given Crew. Beautiful people, Sherry here from NFGC. Um, so just a quick announcement, uh, I think I'm going to discontinue the zodiac signs. I'm not seeing the response that I was hoping for. Um, so I've done eight signs. I have four more left. So I have Libra, Scorpio, Sag, and Capricorn yet to do. Um, so I'm feeling that it's really not worth my time to, to finish out the zodiacs, um, mainly because um, you know, each reading that I do it takes about two hours to do. Uh, that's because I have to cut and edit um, the trailer, but also the recording time. Some of my videos are over an hour long. So, um, so two hours each times 12, that's like 24 hours of my time that I'm putting into it. And so um, if you were to order a reading like this privately, it would cost $100, right? And so I'm selling them for $11 per unit. And so far, I've only sold 15 units. So in order for me to break even, I would need to sell at least 10 per zodiac sign, right? So yeah, so um, I think the way that, you know, I'm asking you guys to show me if this is what you want. Um, I've actually been dropping in subs. I've lost 130 subs since I started the zodiac signs. So that's a bit troubling to me. So if you want the zodiac sign, um, show me with your with your love. So hit the sub button. If I hit 7,000 subs, I will continue doing the zodiac signs. Um, also, let me know in the comment section below if you would like me to do your zodiac sign. Um, if you're one of the outstanding signs, if you want me to still do the reading, I can certainly do that for you. But yeah, okay. Hi guys, welcome to this uh, this week's twin flame reading. Um, so let me see here. I think we'll use my cards uh, for the main energy. Actually, we'll use all my cards, I think, for this reading. So this will be a twin flame reading for the uh, April the 8th until the 15th. So let me pull the cards and then we'll go through the positions. Also, a special thank you to all the patrons um, that have that are supporting me. I just wow, my heart is. Thank you guys. Seriously, you have no idea what this means to me. I had no, I had, I was very fearful of actually starting the Patreon account because I'm like, there's no way anyone's going to do this. And then now I, I have like 38 people uh, supporting me every month, and um, I'm just blown away by by the whole response. Thank you so much, guys. I love you. Okay, so um, this is going to be the basic Twin Flame reading. So I'm, I may pull clarifier. So let me just shuffle the deck here. Okay, so beginning with uh, the Feminine's Past Position, Ten of Swords. Oh, wow. I just noticed that I have a misprint down here. It says the Four Swords. At the bottom, good thing I, I I obviously caught that before it went to print, but I'm just noticing that now. Interesting. Um, so the Ten of Swords is, um, you know, the dark night of the soul. Uh, so it is feeling betrayed, abandoned, um, hurt, you know, just torn apart by somebody or some type of situation. But the Ten means that it's the completion of that. So the hood's beautiful to see for the feminine. I just want to pull one clarifier here. 
Three of Wands. Okay, so that's good. You're like you're you you're feeling encouraged. You're feeling um, that you've been able to cut some major shit out of your life in the past. You're turning more to spiritual growth or creativity. You're, you're feeling, um, you're starting to see the fruits of your labor. You're, you know, it's just a beautiful shift in perspective from complete darkness to, to excitement and encouragement. That's beautiful. Okay, so on the masculine's past position, seven of swords, wow. Same kind of dark energy, not being able to trust, uh, feeling betrayed, stabbed in the back. Right, so he isn't completing this cycle quite yet. So let me just pull one more card. Wow, okay, so he has completed that cycle from what I see. Or he, you know, there was a definite shift from darkness to light. Wow, I'm just realizing that was the, sh the theme of last week's reading. That shift in perspective. So the crown chakra is the highest chakra activation. It's I know. From darkness to illumination. Incredible. Okay, so the present position for the feminine. Nice. The high priest. So, crown chakra activation. Um, this is being connected to the collective conscious as well as just the superconscious mind, the universe. There's this universal knowing that this um, element is drawing from the ethereal. And he's passing this wisdom on to whoever will is open to listening. So this is a spiritual leader. It's also um, your vibe tribe as well. Very powerful energy to be in the present position. The masculine is present. Wow, yin. So, this could mean a couple of things. First of all, this could be the masculine's energy. Um, being in the yin energy, being receptive. Um, this is a card of manifestation. But it's very gentle, loving energy. Now, this could also be that the masculine, you know, is focusing his attention on the feminine. That he knows who his feminine is. Um, I'm going to pull one clarifier. Nine of Pentacles. So this is independence, um, completion, like nearing the completion. You feel like you've arrived at this um, fruitful stage of your life. You don't have to worry about money. You're looking after yourself. Self-love for both of these cards. Um, and this is all about 3D reality as well. Earth energy. So what I'm kind of feeling from this is the masculine gaining his independence so that he can interact with the feminine in 3D reality. Um, there's a real sense of completion here that I'm feeling. So let's see what the rest of the reading says. Okay, the near future for the feminine is the Five of Cups. So mourning, heartbreak, loss. Very unusual for it to be showing up in this position. Um, the only place that I can really see it coming from is the Ten of Swords. So let's pull a clarifier. Seven of Cups. So there's a progression from the five to the seven. So, you know, Dorothy wants to find the yellow brick road home. So she knows what she wants. She, she doesn't know how to get there. So it's causing some heartbreak in the feminine. Um, you know, what I see here is something not working out the way you thought it might. So let's go back to the high priest and see if we can get a little bit more action. The five of Pentacles. Okay, so... This is detachment, feeling alone. Um, but, you know, if I was to pull this earlier, I, what I would see is this element of the high priest helping those people that are less fortunate, those people who don't have a tribe. You know, I, I would feel that there's connectedness here. But since we have, you know, 
this five of cups coming in the future. Um, yeah, um, and this is all emotional. I would say that something is lost. I don't know. Let's continue. Of course, when I do the extended reading, all this will come clear. Okay, near future for the masculine. Wow, chariot. Very powerful energy. So here we're moving from an introverted to an extroverted. Um, so this is overcoming challenges. Um, but it's, it's free will and the power of the will to achieve whatever um, they desire. So if you want something bad enough, go after it and don't let anything hold you back. So this energy is coming from a sense of completion, right? There's this major awakening that takes place in the past that, ha that is directly related to the yin and then to incredible, determined forward movement in the future, in the near future. So since I'm pulling one card each for every position, wow, more powerful energy here. Speaking up, taking, you know, this is about being the king of the hill and holding that place. You're being challenged, right? You, yeah, it's just a very powerful energy. It's, it's having the confidence to speak up. So these two cards coupled together, it's just, you know, the will is unstoppable. Okay, so let's leave the final outcome for later, and we'll move into the union energy. So what's the feminine bringing in? Wow, the yang. So what I'm feeling very strongly is a balancing of the yin and the yang, especially in the zodiac um, readings that I did. You know, there was this gray area, and I, we also saw that in the yin-yang readings that I did last week. So that's what I'm feeling here is this balance in terms of the union, the feminine is maybe taking on the yang energy, uh, which is power that comes from authenticity, knowing who you are. Um, or she could be re mirroring back the masculine, you know, because this is kind of like it, both in the present position, right? Okay, so one card, throat chakra. Um, so the feminine is going to be an energy of wanting to communicate or listening to her inner voice. Um, I just feel this, you know, vortex of openness uh, and a quiet strength that comes uh, with it. I don't know. Again, she's taking on this masculine high priest in the present position as well. What's the masculine bringing in? Wow, five of pentacles. Okay, so it's the same card over here. So now we understand where that heartbreak and confusion is going to come from in the near future. Because the masculine is bringing in that five of pentacles. Um... She may feel detached from the high priest or, um, let's see what the clarifier is first. Base chakra. Okay, so this is a lower chakra. This is a feeling of not having your basic needs met. Again, the Five of Pentacles is feeling left out in the cold, detached in the 3D reality. This is also 3D. So, you're, in terms of the union, he feels that his basic needs aren't being met. And he feels detached and alone. And the feminine is picking up on that energy in the present position, which causes heartbreak and confusion in the near future. So, but in terms of the union... There's so much balance here. It's, it's really confusing. 
But, I mean, essentially he overcomes that, right? He finds this power to overcome any challenges. Okay, so um, the foundation. Nice. Page of Wands. So this is the beginning of a new adventure. Being excited. Great news. Great communication. Um, this card was showing up a lot in the zodiac signs. So there's this newness, this new start, this vision as a foundation that is shared between both aspects. So in the union, there's positivity and, you know, a chance for a new start. The crowning, the grand awakening card, judgment. So this is waking up, hearing the calling, um, needing to make an important decision. So you're weighing the choices, the consequences, it's deep contemplation. And from that, you make these major uh, realizations. And we can see an epiphany here as well. Um, so this is a rebirth as well. Right in the Rider Waite deck, it, there's this family that's kind of crawling out of their coffins, and they're rejoicing at this new beginning. So this is what they desire as a crowning. They both want to fully awaken, fully choose a life that is, you know you know, that where they can live their life to their fullest and be authentic. That's beautiful, because that's what I see right here. It's like they're mirroring each other, right? There's this deep, intimate knowing and in, the desire to reconnect. Right? This is missing somebody and wondering where they are, right? And over on this side, there's movement, and there's power, there's strength. And again, there's, you know, feeling of missing each other here. Okay, so um, let's go to the heart-centered energy, the Nine of Wands. Um, so this is a feeling like you've reached the end of the line where you can't go any further. You want to give up. You're tired, exhausted. Uh, the Ten of Wands is collapsing in, in exhaustion. But this card also represents spiritual strength. So we have that ignition with the page and the energy during this week is going to be hang in there. We got the spiritual power to continue on. In the John Forsyth deck, it, there's a Buddha that's holding up this stone um, building, right? And it's a small little Buddha. So. I see a lot of spiritual energy, strength that's kind of being um, vibrating between the two of them. And so once you're awake, you're always awake. You can't fall back asleep. You can continue to, you know, um, grow to higher levels you know, in terms of consciousness, but you can never fully fall back asleep again. So, yeah. There's determination, courage, power, a will to continue. So feminine, don't lose hope. Um, there was a little hiccup in the, the past, but look at that, right? There's so much illumination here and balance that you have no need to worry. Okay, final outcome for the feminine, <laughs> nine of swords. Okay, so we got this perpetual cycle so the Ten of Swords, we thought we completed that cycle. We get that hiccup, and then we got the Nine of Swords again. So the Nine is nearing the completion of, of these stabbing thoughts, inability to sleep, nightmares. Something um, triggers you. But again, it's nearing the end of this, right? Okay, so let's pull a card. Eight of Pentacles. So very opposite energy. This is groundedness, 
Um, over here we have the nine, you know, nine is com nearing the completion, it's feeling rady, um, it's harvest, um, self-love. Over here we got the eight, which is um, positive movement forward, you're almost there. You have an influx of abundance coming into your life, and that gives you momentum, momentum to move forward forward right there's at a really steady pace um, so it's like you reach this moment where you think that you've grown enough and you've put in the work and something doesn't work out the way you thought it would and so you're in this state of fear mental um, all mental stuff right but it's nearing the end so let's look over here at the final come for the masculine is a page of swords so this is communication right um, an important communication card so but this is more of an unemotional uh, detached communication it's speaking your truth it's having clarity about a situation and are you able to see? You're not able to see that. I'm so sorry, guys. And I probably didn't have to turn it like that. I could have just went like this. All right. So, um, yeah. So, this is having clarity about a situation and then, and then speaking your truth about it. Um, this page also represents new beginnings. So, there, we see a clarity happening here, here. Um, a clarity about a situation here, again, here, here, uh, here as well, and here as well. So overall, this reading is about needing to make a decision, finding that truth, and then speaking it. Over here, I keep getting this sensation of, you know, the Om chant. I, I listen to it a lot when I'm meditating. So there's a lot of peace in terms of the union, a, a beautiful reflection here. Um, and then, you know, the masculine is coming into balance. And it's, it's like, you know, you guys have been waiting a long time for this conversation to manifest. But it's coming with so much clarity and power. Okay, so one card. Wow, the Knight of Fire. Not only is he going to speak his truth, but he's coming forward in this very powerful energy that is reflective of the chariot. Even though the chariot is water, we see fire with the Seven of Wands mirroring back this energy. You know, this is air and fire, but a little bit of earth in there. This is... Um, yeah, just water and fire. So, you know, and the chariot gives off very similar vibration as a night of fire as well. It's, you know, like an arrow directed towards that goal. And that energy is moving towards the feminine. What I see here is don't worry, everything is going to work out. You know, all that work is for naught. Okay, so the overall energy is nice. The Six of Wands, success and victory. Again, this sense of fear not. You know, and it, so now I'm hearing cheering, right, as this horse is running towards the feminine. There's this cheering taking place. So try and stay in that high priest vibration. Um, Yeah, leave a comment below if you resonate with this. Very curious to hear. Okay, so one for the feminine. A certain slant of light. Wow, very cool. And the masculine. Archimbald the mermaid. Okay. So I think this is about self-image. Not having confidence, right? We can see him getting that confidence. 
insecurity about image, feeling alone, feeling you're not good enough. Um, over here, the certain, uh, the certain slant of light is all about spirituality. Um, hearing the calling. Hearing the calling. Hearing the calling, cheering on. Very cool. Okay, let me read these. All right, so number 28. Okay. From the darkness there emerges illumination deemed divine, feckless searching terminated by insight most sublime. From despair and confusion erupts another form of sight, lucidity, all resulting from a certain slant of light. And that's what I was seeing throughout the entire reading is lucidity. Found a title for the reading. Okay, so a pensive mermaid lies in her grassy pond waiting for an answer to come to her. A grand light shines from above illuminating her and her surroundings in a moment of d divine insight and understanding. Wow, crown chakra, grand awakening. I mean, in the crowning position is that, wow, incredible. Okay, so the meaning is illumination is coming. Darkness and confusion are commonplace in this world, but do not worry, do not worry. The illumination is coming in the form of a new way of viewing your environment or situation. Some call it divine insight and others call it enlightenment. Either way, be prepared for a new perspective. A sudden shift in thinking will arise from the uncovering of unknown facts, opinions, and desires. These new points will help you understand where you are now and help you to answer some of the questions that have been gnawing at you for some time. Be prepared though, the illumination may be subtle and easily missed. Keep your eye open and your spirit curious so that you don't miss out on the illumination you have been so long waiting for. Incredible. Wow. That's exactly it. This is what you've been wanting. That illumination. That powerful strength, right? There's a sense of a climat climatic moment that has been long coming. And here we got that page turning into the night. It's coming. That illumination is coming. So don't worry, guys. All right, so it's 18. Alone we drift distractedly, a party drawn apart. Together we are invincible, a living work of art. Okay, so right away, drawn apart, disconnected. And there's this realization that together, you know, you're a work of art. In union, you're a work of art. I really want to get that out of the way and move this into union. There we go. Mirroring. Okay. So, at first glance, she's a pretty mermaid lass, gazing soulfully with her large pale eyes. A closer inspection reveals a myriad of fish and other ocean dwellers that comprise of her luxuriant tail combining to create a, l a living work of art. The sum of your parts. Lately, you've been experiencing feelings of self-deprivation, uh, maybe because you've been studying your figure with a dissatisfied eye or bemoaning the sides of your feet. You need not stop the hypocritical, you need to stop the hypocritical analyzing before you sink any lower. You are so much more than the collection of your parts. Other people don't look at you through the lens of a microscope, and it is unhealthy to do so for yourself. Concentrate instead on the beautiful person you are as a whole and treat yourself with love and affection. Okay, so, yeah, there's, again, that, you know, that feeling of not being enough is coming from, you know, you don't feel you're good enough for the feminine. You know, so you've been detaching yourself, you've been questioning but again, there's this major illumination that comes. All right, so I do hope this helps, and I will see you next week. Cheers.
Okay, welcome back. So this is the extended version of the Twin Flame reading for April the 8th until the 15th. So I'm using my original deck here to finish out the rest of the reading. So we're going to do um, a past, present, and future um, for each aspect. Uh, then I'll pull two cards per position for the Union Energy. All right, so let's begin. So the cards, the clarifiers that I pulled so far, um, those would be considered the present position. Okay, so let's start on the feminine side, past position. Okay, so past is the throat chakra. And, wow, page of cups. So both of these cards have to do with communication. Uh, the page of cups is loving messages. So um, the past position, we have the throat chakra connected to the ten of swords. Okay, so the feminine may have cut off communication cut off contact, um, ended something, um, but what I see here very strongly is cutting off con um, communication, um, possibly with the masculine or with somebody who is has a lot of negative energy around them. And that choice brought um, a lot of positivity into uh, the feminine's life, I guess, right? And then the future position, we have the page of cups. So we have this transition from, you know, negative energy into more positive, loving um, energy. So this is a beginning of a, a new relationship, a loving relationship, a desire to, to start that connection. Um, but really it's about, you know, communicating your love, your emotions for somebody. You know, it's like the bubble phase. Okay. So... You know, really want to make sure that we get these on camera. Okay, so on the masculine side, we had the Seven of Swords and the Crown Chakra. So the Bay Chakra, interesting. Wow, and the Ten of Cups. So the Bay Chakra coming in the past, connected to the Seven of Swords. You know, further uh, emphasizing the fact that the masculine um, doesn't feel safe, doesn't trust... Um, you know, and this could be a self-image is issue, but really there's a sense of confidence, right, that he is putting behind him. Because even though the base chakra is coming in uh, with the union energy, there's this powerhouse of energy that comes forth in the future. So, you know, that's really just reflecting on this universal card I read there at the end. Um, coming out of a darkened state into illumination with the crown chakra, uh, and then seeing this vision of the Ten of Cups in the future, this happily ever after, peace and harmony, and that's what's fueling the masculine energy. Okay, so I want to make sure you can see those. Let me just move this up a bit. How's that? Is that okay? All right. So present position for the feminine, the Knight of Cups, and the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so did we have this last week, this combination of Knight and Knight, you know, a loving um, movement and then slowing down to the, um, you know, slow pace with the Knight of Pentacles? It seems really familiar to me. Okay, so anyway, um, the Knight of Cups coupled with the High Priest. So we have a progression from the Page of Cups over here to the Knight. So there was growth in love, in movement, you know, in commitment. There was, um, you know, a sense of giving your love to all, trusting, um, you know, because in the Osho Zen, this is uh, trust. So that was a major theme that was showing up in all the zodiac signs as well. So um, moving forth in the world, connecting with other people that are on a spiritual journey, um, but also, you know, what I'm feeling here is giving love to all unconditionally, um, but also attracting love into your life because you're, sh you're shining your light, you're connecting, you're finding your true authentic self. Now, the, the 
Five of Pentacles in the present position. Again, that's that disconnect that we feel with the masculine. Um, yeah, so what I see here is even though there's a, a feeling of disconnection, um, there's still growth and movement with the Knight of Pentacles. So this is committing to a long-term goal, um, taking it one step at a time and arriving at your destination. And it shows you know, this long journey of growth, right? And we can see that energy showing up again in the, um, as a final outcome. Okay, so the present position for the masculine. So the yin and the nine of pentacles. Five of Wands and Five of Cups. Okay, so two fives. So the Five of Cups is coming in the future. So we've got a synchronicity here with the Five of Cups on the feminine side coming in the near future. Now the Five of Wands is overcoming challenges and obstacles, feeling um, that you need to stand out amongst the crowd. Okay, so here's that self-confidence showing up. It's, it's growing in strength and power with the seven of wands in the near future so that's great and we can see because he was over to was able to overcome that blockage there he feels confident and independent which he uses to carry forward now the five of cups mourning loss um you know what i see here is this ethereal mourning um that is being mirrored here you both feel that loss that connection um very strongly and a desire to reconnect okay so the near future for the feminine Six of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles. So the Six of Cups in the past position, we have a progression or growth from the Six to the Seven. Uh, the Five, Six, and Seven, that's pretty cool there. Now, actually it's a regression. There's a cycle here going around in circles. Um, but I feel that that ends um, with some detachment in the near future or a sense of... Um, success that comes in the future but let's go back to the six of cups in the past so um reunion so it's kind of pointing to that page and night so there was this movement forward and connection that is coming from the past um and now it feels like it's not going anywhere or you know you just feel this loss of that connection now the queen of pentacles in the future so this is somebody who gives of herself she shares her abundance um, it's being successful as well it could also represent an earth sign so I'm just gonna pull one additional clarifier for that so I've got my little deck here what do you mean by the Queen of Pentacles be serious okay so I was just noticing we have the knight um, progressing into the queen of pentacles. So growth. This is harvest, reaching that point of success. Now, you know, be serious, make serious decisions, um, being grounded. Um, it's like you're trying to grow this, this long-term goal and I feel that success comes as you know when you start really putting your work and effort into it maybe you've been slacking off in terms of um, you know and what I'm seeing here is growing a business or a financial opportunity um, a chance to share your skills your talents uh, with others in order to profit from it um, 
maybe desiring to manifest this connection into the 3D, but I, I feel there's this spiritual opportunity that you've disconnected from, that you pick up again in the future, and it brings this groundedness and answers to you. You were looking for something in the wrong place? I don't know. Okay, um, so near future for the masculine. The king of wands, very nice. And wow, the devil, okay. So the king of wands in the past position could represent a fire sign, but this is the masculine coming into this power, this free spirit, right? The king of wands would definitely be somebody who is driving a chariot like that. And, uh, you know, that um, night of fire. But this is like leadership. This is somebody who wants to change the world. So now I'm remembering last week's ma masculine reading. They were really coming into this um, spiritual power and wanting to, you know, make a difference in the world. Okay, so here we see um, really embodied, like the masculine really embodying this power by being the king of the hill and taking control of his life and and overcoming challenges and obstacles, uh, which is the ego in the future. So that would be this Archimboldo mermaid, right? That self-image is completely obliterated. Now, this could also be a codependent relationship, an addiction, um, but he breaks through those, that chain with the chariot as the king of fire. Okay, so a lot of fiery, passionate um, energy that is also at the heart that's being represented by the masculine. A lot of fire coming from over there. We see this in a lot of emotional and mental stuff over here, and it's kind of transitioning into earth groundedness. Now, remember, the overall energy is a six of wands, so that's fire, that's excitement, you know, somebody cheering you on, like so. All right, so let's leave the final outcomes for later. Um, we'll move into the union. Okay, so um, this I'm very curious about. So one for the masculine first. Okay, the fool and the eight of wands. Okay, so again with the communication coming in from the past, communication seems to be very important with the feminine. Um, so something happened where maybe she cut off communication, she opened herself again, up again um, emotionally. So the Eight of Wands is accelerated motion. It is sending out positive vibrations and having that energy go coming back. And so it's coming back in the form of good, great news or um, new opportunity, right? Something that's going to be a lot of fun to do, a new adventure. Okay, so you set up this intention a long time ago. So here we have that those answers coming certain slant of light and we can see that you know the the eight of wands is a very directed energy of illumination sending out seed of, seeds of intention and having it come back to you now the fool card is what the masculine's bringing in so the fool and the page of wands are actually a very similar energy um except the fool is taking a leap of faith. It's making a decision to take that chance. So it's starting from zero, being childlike, being free. So we can see that unchaining happening. And so there's this new start to look forward to. And like I said before, we got the night moving forward. So maybe the feminine received news about a new, new beginning. Um, crowning energy, we have the judgment card, one for the masculine, wow, high priest, and the queen of cups. So the masculine wants to embrace this awakening. Um, he's, he's really seeing his power. Um, he is... You know, this is a crowning energy. This is what he's working towards, right, is, is being the high priest. Remember, we have that repeated card over here, the high priest in the present position, position for the feminine. So this is what they both want is the grand awakening. 
So those coupled together, it's it's like he realizes he has a, a purpose. There's a sense of purpose. And then moving forward with that purpose. So the queen, or the uh, feminine's bringing in the queen of cups, right? So this could represent a water sign, but she's bringing in the sense of needing to find emotional stability, um, see how much she loves the masculine, um, recognize un the unconditional love that she's been sending out even though she feels detached and um, sad. Uh, I, I just feel she wants to reunion. She wants Yeah. Okay, so what do we got here also? Um, we'll move into what is the feminine bringing into the union? Wow, Grand Awakening card again. And the King of Cups. Oh my gosh. So the Grand Awakening card coming from the past. The same card here that's crowning energy. So she reviewed the past. She sees the masculine as her mirror. She has made a decision to, um, she heard the call, right? Um, she embarked on a spiritual journey. She's found her sole purpose and she's open for communication. The future position is the King of Cups, so the Queen's counterpart. So what she wants is that loving connection and that's what's coming to her, her true love, her, um, you know, this is somebody who loves very deeply and so is the loving side of the masculine coming to her in the future. The masculine, solar plexus chakra and sun, nice. So. He's bringing in the solar plexus, which is power, courage, strength. So it, it took courage and strength in order to exert his will, you know, on this base chakra. So there's like a cluster of, you know, the base chakra, solar plexus, crown chakra, you know, it's like all these activations all at one time in the past position. Now, he found the courage and the power in order to overcome these minor challenges and obstacles, the, those thoughts in his mind. Um, and he's really working on moving through, you know, that self-image or feeling of loneliness and feeling like he's not good enough. And then he's stepping into the freaking sun. So that this is an ultimate masculine energy, right? The king of fire is the center of the sun. Um, so much confidence and power that's coming through in the future. It's just no kidding. No, no wonders that, you know, the whole reading is about being a rock star. It's like he's center stage. So the most positive card in the deck, new beginnings, again, a sense of innocence, purity, returning. Okay, so the heart center energy. Wow, 11 and 11 and the hermit. So at the heart, the feminine is detaching. Um, you know, this is uh, on a, uh, this is being on a uh, spiritual journey for a very long time, right? So you can see that journey showing up over and over again. It's that sense of don't give up. She's not going to give up. She is she's illuminated she's aware she's strong and that's why she's projecting that that um, emperor um, and that sense of stability and power comes back to her in the near future once she realizes that the universe is with her so continue with that detachment um, try not to let that desire 
to be with the masculine, you know, hurt you or tug at your heartstrings too much, you know, and try to get out of that mindset and get back to work, get back to your life purpose, your mission. So the masculine's bringing in the 11 lemon card. Wow. So at the heart, he ha his power and his strength and courage and will c comes from the 11 11 connection and recognition of it. So here we have that awareness of the connection, awareness of it over and over again. And that feeling of being alone and disconnected is what gives him power to overcome. Limitless is what I'm feeling here. All right, so I think that's all of it, right? So, like I said, the overall energy is the Six, six of Wands. It's um, encouragement, it's people cheering you on. You can do this. You're almost there. You're almost at the finish line. Um, yeah, so I think I'll pull two cards from, I call it Baron Reed, Wisdom of the Oracle. Very powerful reading, I'm feeling. Okay, one for the masculine first. Okay, so co-create and reverse. So if this one's in reverse, I have a feeling I might have put the deck in upside down. No, it's upright. Okay, poised. So we read the feminine first. Poised. Okay, yeah, I, I can kind of feel that. Get ready. You know, something great is going to happen. So this is a message from the universe. Again, it's kind of reflecting the same message there. Okay, so poised. Being ready, bringing something to light. Wow, repeated message, certain slant of light. Um, being at your best, confidence. When you're confident and happy in your own skin, you're ready for a deeper, more intimate relationship. You have nothing to prove right now. You're completely yourself and can handle anything. Love, friendship, and harmonious new connections are all present now or are coming in. You're ready to give and receive from the heart. This is a beautiful place to be. Wow. You're ready to give and receive uh, in a place from your heart. Right, you are, there's definitely love coming from the feminine side. Cupid's arrows. Okay, so masculine. Okay, so it says creativity, art, inspiration, fruition, and manifestation. So in reverse... You're trying too hard to create all that you desire without the nurturing, vital force of spirit. Perhaps you are in a creative slump, suffering, writer's block, facing a monumental task, but unable to decide on the first step. So you just avoid doing anything. Okay, so yeah, I see that avoidance, disconnection. There's a monumental task ahead of you. Um... You know, there's a sense of detachment here. You're ready for a new start, but you're realizing there's just too much to overcome. Okay, so that's why you're turning into the chariot and the night of fire. Um, does the word overwhelmed apply to you right now? Why do you think it all has to come down to you? Inspiration means a drawing in of divine guidance. You must tap into spirit, not simply yourself. Ask spirit for inspiration. Two minds are greater than one, so co-create with your divine partner. Reclaim your partnership with spirit. Inspiration will flow through you as soon as you get out of your own way. Yeah, get out of your own way. That's definitely what I'm feeling here, right? It's You are your own worst enemy. So self-confidence, and I feel that power to overcome that obstacle. Unchain yourself. We're cheering you on, guys. Okay, so I do hope this helped, and I'm sending massive love your way. Cheers.